Hello and welcome. Just one simple adjective would suffice to sum up the character of Henrietta Forsyth, dominating. To control, to have dominion over. It was her lodestone, her raison d'etre. Immensely wealthy from birth, an heiress in her own right, she possessed an unswerving instinct for multiplying that wealth. It would have been a foolhardy stockbroker indeed who did not keep at least one wary eye on Forsyth Holdings. Holdings. The term was as appropriate as it was all-embracing. She held in the palm of her hand shipping, printing, textiles. These were the makings of her empire, an empire over which she yielded despotic control. She was also a cripple. The exact nature of her disability was a mystery. Her enemies, and they were legion, claimed she simply indulged herself in her wheelchair image. It became her throne. For those of her loyal subjects forced to look up to it, just one more symbol of her power and despotism. But for her own more immediate entourage, particularly her recently acquired husband, Carlos Mendoza, it stood for something more. Half her age, South American with an aristocratic background but no private means, Henrietta had simply indulged herself in him, a thoroughbred stallion. For his part, Carlos had reckoned he could accept the terms of the arrangement, but it was not to be. With the passing of time, he could only dwell on his own inadequacy, his own pathetic dependence on her. It was a throne that had to be toppled. Give in. So this is where you've been hiding yourself. The exile is far from self-imposed, I do assure you. I thought we'd arranged to slip down to the village for a drink. Well, as you can see, Her Highness arranged otherwise. But she had no way of knowing, surely. Do I detect a certain panic in his master's All voice? All I meant was, as far as we're concerned... As far, but no further. That about sums it up. Oh, doesn't it? It's just that well, I'm... put your I... mind at rest, she doesn't know. A well, certain instinct, perhaps... Even the Undervine have flashes of it, hence the chores. There's nothing that couldn't have waited but idle hands. Idle work, I know. Hello, who's for company? Mm? The damned great roars parked outside the front. The oh, Harley Street Brigade. Sorry? Oh, the medical fraternity come a-visiting. I thought she'd booted out. Oh, hardly. This one comes highly recommended. He also has a knighthood, which probably means he'll last at least a fortnight longer than any of the rest. <laughs> Ring for tea, will you? Yes. The great man must just have about earned his hundred guineas worth. You know the hell she plays if it isn't served promptly on the stroke of four. Come here. I said come here. Isn't Carlos being just a trifle foolhardy? Yes, yes. Caution to the winds. There are times when there just doesn't seem to be any alternative. No choice. As far as Henriet and I are concerned, for God's sake, you know the way things stand. Oh, as well as anybody. Better than most. Signed, sealed, delivered. For God's sake! You're making it sound as damned official as one of those dreary contractual agreements I've just been sifting through. If you want to put it like that... Well... Well, what it amounts to, unwritten, unspoken even. Perhaps even more binding because of that. Only because you allow it to be. <laughs> A flaw in my character? Oh, I didn't mean... Of it. course you did. It doesn't hurt anymore. How could it? When Henrietta spends half her waking hours reminding me of the fact. Not even the need. I spend all mine doing the reminding for her. Come in. Thank you, Lucy. Shall I pour? No, better wait. Thirty seconds to count down. Hello. Seems we're to lose our illustrious medical gent. We're certainly not to be invited into the menage. Send Dr. Crippen packing and think what we'll save on the Darjeeling. Carlos. Yes, Evelyn. If we'd met. 
before. Oh, yes. Do you think things might have been... Oh, stop. You can start boring now. Dead on cue. Open the door, then. Or are you under the impression you're working for an octopus? Go, then, go. Leave me to my own pathetic devices. Let me bring you to the table, dearest. Your tea, Mrs. Mendoza. <laughs> Think so, too. <laughs> All right, darling. Too much sugar, too little milk, given up expecting. <laughs> Why the extra cup? We thought the doctor might be joining us. No, an urgent summons. Some dreary duchess with a tamping me grin. How did the consultation go, anyway? <laughs> consultation, no less. <laughs> Why aren't we being grand? Well, he was suitably solicitous come obsequious. The usual quack twaddle. A change of scene. Get away from it all. Well, he could be right. He was. That's why I'm following his instructions. Oh? Did you know they just christened a liner after me? You did mention. The SS for Scythe. Sweet of them, wasn't it? Of course, the fact that I own the line might just have had something to do with it. Anyway, her maiden voyage bound for South America sails in a week. <laughs> Evening will make all the arrangements. South America? Oh, Carlo, darling, such a glum little face. I should have thought you'd be delighted. <laughs> a chance to reacquaint yourself with your roots. Essential we never forget our roots, isn't it? <laughs> ah, now I can see Evelyn has something on her little mind. Only to ask if you'll be wanting me to accompany you. Want? Positively top priority, my dear. One of the family. Just me, you, and Carlos. All the comforts of home. <laughs> Carlo Mio? Yes. Stop looking like a little boy just caught filtering the dram and uh, pass me one of those patty sandwiches. Hmm. I am sorry to have to trouble you with such wearisome domestic arrangements, Captain. I realize what I have to say is probably very much of Percy's territory, but at my wife's insistence... Stay I... to the top, man. Well, in Miss Forsyth's case, I'm sure we can make the exception. Thank you. As I expect you've been made aware that my wife is in, uh, shall we say, a somewhat delicate state of health? Well, I'm sure we'll be able to cope with any medical eventuality. But you may still remain unaware that the nature of her condition has in recent years made her into a, shall we say, something of a recluse? Privacy and anonymity are of the essence. I see. For that reason, she has asked me to decline her customary place at the captain's table, preferring to spend the voyage almost exclusively in the confines of her own suite. As she prefers. There are certain matters of a more specific nature she has asked me to bring to your attention. You will already have been instructed that her name be restricted from any passenger list or publicity material Intended for public consumption. Before embarkation. Mm -hmm. That the deck area immediately fronting the suite be declared out of bounds to passengers and crew alike? Inconvenient, but understood. Uh -huh. My wife is constantly attended by her personal secretary, Miss Vincent, so the need for steward service will be minimal. If you would prefer, we could change the original arrangements and offer Miss Vincent accommodation on the same deck, an adjoining cabin even. No, no, no. One deck below will be perfectly adequate, Captain. Availability without proximity. The cruise being in the nature of a second honeymoon, my wife and I would prefer... But then I'm sure you'll understand. Perfectly. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. We travel our own linen. Instructions concerning my wife's special diet are already in the hands of your purser. Priority bookings for ship to shore have been arranged. Apart from that... Uh, well, that seems to cover it. <laughs> it's almost as though she isn't aboard my ship at all. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Which I find utterly unnecessary and faintly ridiculous. Self-imposed exile, my pet. 
Uh, why on earth should you? If only because I predicted it would happen right from the outset. Did you really? I don't recall. Even on our honeymoon. Ah. <laughs> Special circumstances. You know how you hate this damn stupid shipboard ritual. So I shall enjoy myself all the more when we arrive. Oh, now, stop pouting and let me fix your tie. Bend down. Uh. Besides... Not as though for one moment I expect you to incarcerate yourself as well. Far from it. I'll be perfectly happy on my little own while you can... <laughs> what? Well, now, how would the glossy brochure put it? Enjoy the vicarious delights of this floating pleasure drone. Yeah. There we are. And come back here to suffer the petulant consequences? Your jacket needs brushing. Anyway, nothing of the kind. Why? I brought Sweet Evelyn along. I don't see where the hell Sweet Evelyn comes into it. Why did you bring her along anyway? Now, we can't always be thinking only of ourselves, darling. God knows I worked the poor girl hard enough. Think of it as a reward. A golden opportunity to bring her out of herself. Knock some of the edges off her somewhat dowdy image. <laughs> I'm relying on you for that, darling. Are you? But you know I am. I'll just finish dressing. Come. I hope I'm not intruding. Well, the dinner call went some time ago. So it did, my dear. Carlos, you're keeping Evelyn waiting. Your supper tray. <laughs> will you have it now? No, just put it down. Any old place will do. <laughs> You seem rather nervous. Do I? Yes, I suppose so. Well, you've no need to be. <gasps> that new dress suits you to perfection. Quite the belle of the ball. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Carlos? Of course he would. <laughs> Carlos, mm. be a pet. Get my silly trinket box from the bedroom. If I might suggest, I think something at the throat. No, no, I couldn't <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. Now, what about this? The very thing. <laughs> Carlos, dear, mm. fix the glass for Evelyn. <laughs> I insist. Ah, Now, stand back and let me inspect the pair of you. Uh, perfection. Positive perfection. Good evening. Ah, good evening, Captain. Good, good evening. evening. May I inquire after Miss Forsyth? She's fine. Uh, decided on a supper tray and an early night. But everything to your own satisfaction. Perfect. If you'll excuse me, then. Of course. Perfect. And it really is, isn't it? <laughs> Perfect. For as the liner moved south to Carlos and Evelyn, so it seemed... Luminous days, intimate evenings, perfect. Because this is what Henrietta had allowed it to be, meant it to be. Oh, the young couple might have felt a certain sense of suspicion, guardedness to begin with, but Henrietta was far too wily a trapper not to have allowed for that. As the relationship blossomed, she seemed to grow even less aware that anything was amiss. Carlos was encouraged to invite Evelyn back for a nightcap before retiring to her own quarters. A chance to catch up on the evening's excursion, the shipboard gossip. It became a ritual, and when Henrietta started retiring early, leaving the young things to their own resources, well, that became ritual too, but of an altogether more intimate and dangerous nature. Mm. 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 No, no, Carlos. Mm. Not in the corridor, not here. It's too... What dangerous? Then invite me in. Just for a minute or two. Oh, goodness, mm. I want to. Oh, you know that. Well, then. Well, then. Oh. She'll be expecting you back. Sleep. There's no way of knowing. Hours ago. 
on the subject, shall we? Well, well. <laughs> surprise, surprise, my own dear darling. Oh. It's all right, Evelyn. My God, if you could just hear yourselves, see yourselves. <laughs> An interminable wait, but well worth the price of admission. I wouldn't have missed your pathetic charade for anything. So too utterly banal, ludicrous. How the hell did you manage to... Come walk? calling. Not even by invitation, either. But I'm sure dear darling will forgive my inexcusable lap. How? I walked. Oh. I quite simply put one little foot in front of the other and walked. Well, no way I could have maneuvered that ridiculous wheelchair down several flights of stairs, was there? No, of course there wasn't. You knew that. Counted on that. So, I walked. Oh, my God. With the aid of... Well, no, I don't even need the aid of this ridiculous stick any longer. Here, dear darling boy, you have it. Catch. Congratulate me, then. How long have you been able to? Several weeks before embarkation. The moment I despaired of doctors, I cured myself. Nothing miraculous. The motive, you see. Motive? To keep an eye on you, darling. And your very own dear, dear darling, of course. Oh, Why... I suggested, insisted on the cruise. Nothing like a cruise for revealing, shall we say, suppressed intimacies. I carried on with the wheelchair image. It helped no end. Poor, pathetic Henrietta, wheelchair-bound, confined to her cabin. It made you drop your guard, confirmed what I'd already suspected. We were going to tell you. Tell me. Tell me what? That at long last you'd found love, accepted responsibility, grown to manhood. <laughs> Not that, for God's sake. Not with all the goodwill in the world can good, poor, duped Henrietta be expected to swallow that. Please. Please, what? Please. Deny the evidence of my own eyes, ears, thwarted experience of the child. Don't ask it. Not even poor, duped Henrietta can be expected to deny that. A sniveling brat. Child man. And his pathetic, washed-out Please, tart. don't. What? Paid for. Raised from the gutter to be returned to the gutter. The unstuddable stud and his whinnying whore. Please. Past prime, burnt out, a toy, Please. a plaything. To be taken from his shelf, patted and petted. No. Made or broken when I decide. Never before. Only when I, I, Stop I... Stop it. Stop I, it. Ah. Stop it. Ah. Blanket, towel, something to cover her head. Anything. There. Yes. Yes. Something the captain said. It's almost as though she isn't aboard my ship at all. It was, wasn't it? Alone, kept apart, untroubled, never seen. The way she wanted it. Between us, we can still keep it like that. <laughs> Business as usual. No one need ever know. Just the way we all want it. <laughs> and it really is what we want, isn't it? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Yes, yes. But eventually they're bound to discover... The mortal remains? Mm. Not so easy. And not over the side, that's for sure. She never ventured on deck. Mm. Cripple in a bath chair, five foot high. Guardrail, no. Certainly not over the side. So only one alternative, really. Carlos? We get her back to her cabin, my love, and store her until we get to the other side. His pronouncement was as decisive as it was matter-of-fact, made without any feeling of self-doubt. 
almost in the nature of a tiresome chore that had to be effected in the best interests of all concerned. Came the next morning, and a confidence, a nonchalance, had already asserted itself when he eventually presented himself in the captain's cabin. The purpose of his visit seemed social, almost incidental. My dear Captain, how kind. <sighs> now, where was I? Uh, something concerning Miss Forsyth. Oh, yes, 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 how stupid. Well, last evening, though quite late, I think, uh, anyway, a totally impetuous whim for a breath of fresh air, sea breezes, totally unobserved, of course. Well, moon on the water, stars, and with it being in the nature of a second honeymoon, embarrassing to admit, but I am sure that a man of the world, I'm sure you understand. <laughs> of course. How kind. And needless to say, uh, I warned her about the chill of the night air. In these latitudes, after the heat of the day. My, my very point, sir. But her determination being what it is... She's not sick. If you'd like me to send the medical officer. No, no, no. Perfectly hale and hearty. Uh, then I don't quite understand how I can help. My wife's furs, Captain. Furs? Quite. Idiotically, her companion labeled the trunk as not wanted on the voyage. Naturally, they were, of course, dispatched to your cold storage hold. I see. Well, in view of last night's escapade, it now appears that they are very much wanted. The odd stall, at least. And my wife requested that... But uh, normally, such a hold would be sealed and not reopened until we reached our destination. Understood. Perfectly. My very words to her. Unfortunately, the dear lady's resolve can extend to matters altogether more chilling than the night air. I see. Matter of minutes, the item selected, the trunk returned from whence it came. When would it be most convenient? But, my dear Captain, the convenience is all yours. <laughs> My dear, how nice. I thought you would never get here. That something must have gone wrong. Wrong? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Please don't look so tense, my dear. People will think there's something to hide. Mind if I smoke? What did keep you? Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing in particular. The captain needed just the tiniest arm twist, and it was plain sailing. And the old fool would try making amends by pouring large measures of scotch down me. Anyway, I no sooner got back to the cabin than the steward fellow arrived with a trunk. Mm. I didn't ask him in. It might all have come as a rather nasty shock to him. And <laughs> were you able to... Eventually. Tight squeeze, as a matter of fact. Poor Henrietta. The sedentary life, you know. She never did give a damn about poundage. I had to give the steward a helping hand to get it back on his little trolley thing. But he must have noticed. The faintest trace of a bushy, raised eyebrow. Some surplus stuff we found when he'd never have packed in the first place, I said. The large tip did the rest. And now? Now we keep the cabin door very firmly locked and behave exactly as we have always done business as usual, just as if the dear departed were still with us. Routine. You check her share prices on the ticker tape machine, transmit her business transactions on the ship to shore, pass on her complaints about the breakfast tray, the same dull drudge. Well, you should be expert. And in three days' time, when we get to Rio? You take her place, my sweet. Heavily veiled, incognito to the very end, a tiresome, complaining virago in a wheelchair. Gently trundled down a gangplank to a waiting private ambulance and from hence to the baroque splendor of the Hotel Majestica. Oh, one small point. The eccentric old dear will be taking a small attache case containing her liquid assets with her. Of course. Jewelry, traveler's checks, the odd little extra that makes life worth living. But what if there are problems at passport control? My dear, a country that has given sanctuary to countless Nazis and has the poorest economy in the world is hardly going to bother about admitting a sick, eccentric millionaire. When will you join me? After I've checked that all the luggage has been unloaded. 
I see. I'm sure you do. The trunk will come to the hotel with the rest of the stuff. We'll simply confine the great lady to her hotel suite until we decide to take a little drive into the interior. My dear Evelyn, do you have any idea of the size of this country? Huh? There's bound to be some little corn. Three days later, they got everything as planned, exactly as planned. Evelyn, alias poor Henrietta, safely away. Now just Carlos, alone, waiting patiently for the unloading of the rest of the luggage. A long wait, but resigned. It seems all his life he had been waiting for the right moment. Surely he can afford to wait just a little bit longer. But such a long, long wait. Ah, Mr. Mendoza. Oh, Captain, please. Uh, what the hell's a delay? Not totally unexpected, sir. I thought you'd have known. On the voyage out, Miss Forsyth gave instructions that some of the crew were to be signed off on arrival. Hmm. Well, they got themselves a bit organized. Down tools, stopped unloading until something can be worked out. Any idea how long? Not the faintest, sir. If I were you, I'd cut along to your hotel. But the luggage... You... Oh, I know you're supposed to check all luggage through customs yourself, sir. But in Miss Forsyth's case, well, pretty sure something can be arranged. No, I'll wait. I'd better wait. It was at that moment that Carlos looked up and saw it. High overhead on a derrick hung the trunk. No mistaking it. Her initials clearly visible even at this distance. The sun, high in the sky now, asserted itself, asserted. Until the trunk, already moist with condensation, begins to thaw from the below freezing temperature of the cold storage. It was then that the first drop of her blood dropped. It splattered the immaculate whiteness of the captain's tunic. His glance followed Carlos's as the first flies began to gather. Evelyn did not stay long at the Hotel Majestica. It was never her intention to. No one paid her the slightest attention when she took the lift down to the foyer. A helpful bellboy offered to help her with the small black traveling case. But she seemed most determined to hold on to it herself. Once outside, she was soon lost in the throng. What was it that Carlos had told her on the ship? There's bound to be some little corner.